If you're wondering how to productively best utilise your time, then this video might be of great importance as we understand how long you can realistically look to do deep and focused work, but equally how you can utilise the rest of your time to benefit your output. So one thing I've noticed that you may have too is that when working on something mentally taxing, my brain tends to struggle with maintaining productivity after a handful of hours. Sometimes this might be 3 hours but most days when I feel well it's around 4, what I refer to as the 4 hour rule. For others who don't regularly mentally strain themselves, it might be limited to just 1 or 2 hours. And no, it's not that I or others are lazy, but it's built upon our capacity for work in a day before we need rest. Today I actually break down most of my days to have set periods of time of up to 4 hours where I do my most creative and challenging work, because I understand what I'm capable of and equally my limitations. And I'm in good company here. For example, Charles Darwin would work in his study from around 8am, staying in there for about an hour and a half. At 9.30 he would read his mail and write letters. At 10.30 Darwin returned to more focused work, sometimes moving to his aviary or greenhouse to conduct experiments. By 12pm he would often finish his day's work and go for a long walk. As you can see from his example, his average day would often have about 3 hours of focused work where he devised and developed his greatest ideas and breakthroughs, otherwise his days were spent doing smaller, less taxing tasks or resting. And this practice of great thinkers of the past not working at extensive hours in the day isn't actually that uncommon. But why is this? In a study conducted by psychologist Carl Anders Ericsson, it was found that in training on music, the best students on average did so for around the 4 or 5 hour mark. The study itself is fascinating, as it delves into an idea of deliberate practice, and forms the foundations to Malcolm Gladwell's principle of the 10,000 hour rule to becoming an expert though I'll look to cover that in another video. Now it's not that everyone should abide to this idea of 4 hours of focused work, as while it works for me, it may not for you. As Kalina Michalska, a developmental neuroscientist and assistant professor in the Department of Psychology at the University of California at Riverdale says, humans have individual differences in attention networks and circadian rhythms. Simply, we're all unique so it comes down to understanding your individual biology to utilise your time most effectively. However, there's more to my working day on average than the 4 hours. So how do I apply the 4 hour rule? First and foremost, the principal point that's of great importance to me when planning what I want to complete in a day is to identify those tasks which require me to think most and require the most focus. For example, as someone who does software development this is usually the time I'll spend on the most complex development that I need to do on that day. Now in addition to that, I've found that the time of day I tend to be at my most productive is between 9am and 1pm, so I'll look to book in and complete this work during that time, including some short breaks to avoid burnout in the 4 hours. Great, so now we've worked out that I've scheduled time to complete the more complex mental exercises for my day. But how do I utilise the rest of the time in my working day? Well, if I'm totally honest it's rare that I do. In most cases I utilise some of the hours around the 4 hour block, but on average I think I probably waste some of the time too, either doing non-productive tasks or talking to colleagues or friends. You might think this is quite an odd thing to say in a video about increasing productivity, but in a study conducted in the UK, it was found that the average person only productively uses 2 or 3 hours of their working day. So even with me utilising the time the way I do, I'm actually significantly more productive than the average person, and in reality, while I call it unproductive time, it's actually time for my personal development. Now I appreciate you might be wondering, why am I more productive? Well it's because I'm aware of the idea of the 4 hour rule and I'm quite careful about how I manage my schedule and time, meaning I'm actively recording how my time is utilised each day. So now the question is, if I've done all the heavy lifting in my 4 hour block, what do I do in the rest of the time? While we've got a limited capacity on how much we can do each day on a taxing task, you can still complete other less straining tasks at other times. In essence, this is the time I use to complete admin tasks that really require little thought, usually responding to emails or planning for coming days. Going back to my example of Charles Darwin, this is the time he spent reading or writing letters, or just resting or going for walks, which in itself is something beneficial as it's been found that walking can help creativity. 
The point here is that tasks that are mentally less taxing don't need to be completed in your focus block, rather they are tasks that can be completed around that time. A great example of this is Tony Robbins, who was a janitor when young and would work through the night to build up his business as a performance coach. His job was something that provided an income to survive, but wasn't something that would require deep thought. However, when the evening came, his time to spend focused effort to build a business was utilised and well, I don't think I really need to tell you how successful he's become since then. So understand your body and your psychology, and apply something similar to the 4 hour rule to most productively utilise your day. Around this, don't waste the time you have, but instead use it productively on less demanding tasks. In doing so, you'll have an edge on the vast majority of people. 